Tonight, after much prevarication, the Swiss admitted they'd ordered the Tupolev to descend under the DHL plane with just 50 seconds to avoid disaster. But the Russian pilot didn't respond immediately until called again by air traffic control. He got so close he triggered the collision alarm in the Boeing. The computer ordered the DHL pilot to dive. He did so right into the path of the other plane. Normalement, ce système aurait dû détecter Normally, this alarm system should have detected that the Russian plane was descending. But in this case, it gave the other plane an order to descend as well. Au pilote, ou également de redescendre. Blaming the alarm avoids other questions. Two Swiss controllers were on duty, but one was on a break. Did that affect what happened? And why the delay in ordering collision avoidance when they'd been in control of the planes for up to 10 minutes? As for the alarm, it only works if it's fitted to all aircraft, so it's mandatory in European airspace. But not all Russian planes have it. Were they flying illegally? Questions then, but few answers. More than 36 hours after the crash, the cranes have moved in to start removing pieces of the Russian airline. This section, where most of the dead were sitting, of course, for the most part, schoolchildren. All day, hearses have been taking bodies away, and in a nearby sports hall, the personal effects have been collected and sorted. These often the most poignant reminders of lives cut short. A handbag, some money, a Russian guidebook to Spain. This was to have been a great adventure that shouldn't have ended like this. So far, only 38 of the 71 bodies have been found. The authorities fearing the dead, like the debris, have been strewn over a large area. This is the tail section, and you can see the remains of the three engines here of the Russian jet, the Tupolev. It's the actions of the pilot of this aircraft that are now the main focus of the investigation. Did he, as the Swiss suggest, simply ignore instructions? Or was he, as the Russians are claiming, not given enough time to take evasive action? All that across a part of European airspace where three air traffic control zones converge. This will reopen the debate about simplifying air traffic control across Europe, where skies get ever more congested, safety margins become ever narrower, and the peak air travel period will soon be upon us. It rather looks as if there was a situation where the, uh, the, where the, the, uh, the collision system uh, in the Boeing did exactly what it was, was supposed to do and unfortunately at uh, more or less the same moment or at a timing that was critical the, uh, the Tupolev crew did something else and of course you reach a point in the end where there's no way out of the, uh, the physical geometry of the situation and the aircraft are going to collide regardless of what systems are on board. Across Europe there are scores of different ATC systems of various countries and controllers have been striking only this summer to keep it that way. The fact is that uh, any one controller can only control so many aircraft, which is why the sky is divided up into sectors. Simply changing uh, the way you run air traffic control is not going to change that situation. Aircraft will still have to be handed over from one controller to another. At the crash site, investigators say they've now recovered the remains of 67 of the 71 victims. Debris from the collision is spread over an area 25 miles wide. Today, further pieces of the wreckage will be hauled onto trucks to be taken away for closer inspection. The is now reporting that the pilot of the passenger jet had sought permission to change course 90 seconds before the crash. The international row over who's to blame won't be cleared up until information contained in the black box flight recorders is released. Until then, the grieving families are left trying to make sense of the crash experts believe should never have happened. Romilly Weeks, ITV News. In the German town of Ovingen, so narrowly missed by the falling debris, a memorial has been placed in the main square. With all the finger pointing as to who was to blame for this, the people here don't want the dead to be overlooked. James Mates, ITV News, Uberlingen, southern Germany. A thousand miles from home, they have come to Germany to be where their children died. More than 50 Russian families, led by rescue workers to the spot where the chartered Tupolev airliner fell to earth. They gathered around the tail section and the burned out engines of the plane. The main fuselage, where so many young people died, had already been removed to enable their bodies to be recovered. A wreath was placed against one of the engines, and then a number of parents knelt in prayer. This is only the briefest of visits. These families will be flying back to Russia tonight. 
One can hardly imagine how difficult today must be for them. But with their children dying so far away, this is something they wanted and needed to see. Several could be seen collecting ears of barley to take back home, some small reminder of the land that claimed their children. As they left, a number were visibly overcome. After a memorial service, they were to give what help they could to police trying to identify the bodies. So far, 68 of the 71 have been found. An intensive search has continued throughout today for the remaining three. Of the DHL Boeing 757. This is a central section still relatively intact, with a section of wing still attached to it. Much of the rest of the aircraft was spread right the way down this hillside, where the rescue workers are now still looking for clues and for bodies. You can see from the trees that the fire here has been intense. If this had come down in a built-up area, one can only imagine how much damage would have been done. Possible to have a situation where the uh, onboard computer on the aircraft in the collision avoidance system uh, is telling the pilot correctly to, uh, to climb or to descend, and at the same time, the air traffic controller, who has no way of knowing that that's happening, is telling the pilot to do the opposite thing. In those circumstances, uh, there are no rules, but the guidance to pilots is very clear that you should obey the computer, not the air traffic controller. Both aircraft should also have been fitted with collision avoidance systems. They're similar to this one, which warns the pilot if the plane is too close to the ground. Modern systems would give a warning if another aircraft was on course for collision. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. One expert says it may have been the very fact that conditions were so perfect that led someone into a fatal error. I think that we're going to see here certainly human error involved. Now we really can't say at this stage whether the human error was pilots or whether it was air traffic controllers. When there have been mid-air collisions it's been very often when the controllers have relaxed after a period of high tension. It seems that when the adrenaline's up you can do superhuman things and when the adrenaline's down you relax too much. It's a very rare event to get mid-air collision. It should not happen because of the number of safety systems that are built in both in the air traffic system and in the aeroplanes to alert the pilots of close pro proximity. The um, aeroplane's pilots had collision avoidance systems which are little radar screens on which they can see where all the aircraft are in the vicinity of their own and they can take avoiding action even without the controllers helping them so it's a complete mystery as to how this could have occurred.